I'm going to say the name wrong, I guarantee. Uh, I've got my speaker, Mauro, here. If I've said the name wrong, I've said everybody else's name wrong all day long. So he's just going to smile and be like, yeah, that's me. Okay. Um, the final talk of the day is I Fought the Law and the Law Lost. This is part of a series of talks that aims to collect vulnerabilities in the Argentinian security forces. And without further ado, I will pass over to Mauro right now. Thank you. Okay. Hi. How are you? Hi. Well, glad to hear that. Well, this is a talk that was uh, intended for the, uh, to be a series of talks of many Argentine security forces. I know my pronunciation is not the best, so I ask for your pardon in advance. If something is not uh, understood, just raise your hand and I try to say it slowly or better. Uh, as this is the final chapter, it's intended to last at, at least for an hour. So I have uh, cropped it out and trying to make it on a shorter way. So I'll go a little faster on the first part. It's not as important as the last one. The first part uh, is basically every antecedent that got uh, the Argentine security force uh, system to what it is today, a bad one. So let's start. Uh, I, this is a brief introduction. My name is Mauro, I was born in the 90s in Argentina. I worked all my life for the government on different sites. Not something right. I have a really little uh, security firm. We are very few people from Argentina and we work uh, on every, every contract. It's based on government or security forces. So, uh, we are in an apocalyptic, uh, in an apocalyptic situation now on what it's related to security forces. Uh, we have four, what we call the four horsemen, four events that carried out uh, what it is today to be the, what is the, the current status of our security forces. Uh, as this talk is the final chapter, uh, I have divided it into those four events. Everything disclosed here is publicly available or reachable on making us inquiries or even reaching uh, the news or pace bin or every other place when I'm here. So, uh, the four events that took us to what we have today in Argentina were the following. We have a leak from two federal forces happening to work together. It's they were the Federal Police of Argentina and the National Gendarmerie. Uh, the leak of the Ministry of National Security during a spear phishing campaign that led to uh, the disclosing of many officials, officers and public figures uh, accounts. The Buenos Aires City Police internal leaks led by unhappy cops. It was an internal leak. And the Buenos Aires City Police entire database dump contained the personal information of every officer, agent, and even the political side of the force. It was from the security minister of the city. It's a long way to get here, so let's start. Uh, the Argentine Federal Police suffered three attacks. Two were made uh, using the same technique. On 2010, it was a defacement led by the ACIB gang. They are very popular uh, on the police sites hacking scene. The PFA was Prada on 2011, and Project X, which was a national scandal. Let's start. Uh, abusing the put method on the web server, they lead to a simple defacement. Everything was hit, was nothing really uh, Really surprising, it lasted for an hour and it was gone. They just uh, restored the site like nothing had happened. Then, this is the photo of the leak, of the defacement, sorry. Then, the next year, they made a, another defacement using the put method again. It was, uh, in Spanish, La Federal Vista La Moda is a reference to the movie The Devil Wears Prada. Using the put method again, they defaced the site and saw an image of someone dressed as a policeman during a gay parade. This was intended as a simple joke, but it posed 
it exposed, sorry, what was our security setup from a federal force, a federal force that deals with drug trafficking, with uh, human trafficking, with money laundering, with things that might be hosted there or not, but are dangerous to be exposed in that way. Then, on 2012, it was a year of really hard political tensions. Uh, there were many people doing what we call the cacerolazos, the, the popular, uh, like a popular march, and uh, people gathered themselves via Facebook to march on uh, different places of the city. During one of those marches, uh, this leak and defacement happened. There was a rumor that is in verified to this day that the Argentine Federal Police participated together with the Gendarmerie on a civilian surveillance or espionage uh, campaign. There wasn't any, uh, any proof of that. It wasn't like a rumor. Then, the group was uh, leaked to be called Project X. Okay, then on September, during one of those marches, the PFA site suffered one of the last attacks. Uh, during the defacement, the hacker published some links to internal databases of the site. One of the databases contained information about PFA, the Federal Police, and GNA, the Gendarmerie. Are, uh, they are two forces that are not related. They didn't even have the same tasks. The Gendarmerie, it's like a border patrol. Aside from having uh, tasks like drug trafficking, smuggling, uh, human trafficking too. And the PFA have other tasks different to them. So why were they working together as there were no political agreement, no, no police agreement to work together? The leaks went viral during months. Uh, people used those leaked passwords, those reused passwords, to enter uh, their personal accounts, personal police accounts. Then uh, it started like a viral thread on Taringa and many Latin American sites, uh, disclosing what it was later a new leak. From the original leak, uh, happened here in Project X, people started doing their own housing queries, started to hack, if we like to call it that way, into the police accounts, the personal accounts, creating new dumps. For example, uh, Facebook of police officers, uh, Twitter of police officers, every, everyone with uh, its user and its password. Some people recognized that some of the names in the dump and they discovered that there were only officers. There were personal of ministries, the justice one and the defense ones, that by law, by constitutional law, are not allowed to work together. Justice and security is for internal use, while defense is for external. Then in Reddit and other forums, people started using OSINT against those names and posted them on the internet with information such as workplace, other contact information, and created like a viral chain of new leaks every day. Passwords were stored in plain text and mostly were reused in other sites. Many of them can be easily found on uh, dictionaries like RACU.txt. The published files were MDB Microsoft Access databases. So anybody could have downloaded them as they were served publicly. This is the photo of the leaks. For example, here is people mocking their passwords. For example, here's another one saying, hey, those passwords from the police station's accounts are working. Go now and download them before they change them. So people was advising other people to keep on leaking. Once again, hey, information is true. This information is true. I have entered it on the Facebook of a girl. Those passwords are used on this system, but many other people reused them. And later, the attacker didn't ask me anything on Reddit uh, and confessed he had used a default template file, a GSP file, to upload items, to upload files. 
It was an example that was never deleted when deployed. He used it to upload a show. Then he got it right and hacked it. Finally, the site went offline forever. While no one, uh, no one gave an explanation of what happened, not from official sources or from the police sources. Project X was never heard again. Well, the walling of the Minister of Security. During January, this is the, every time I talk about a, for, a security force or a government uh, office, I put their logo here. Sorry. Okay, during January, the last year, the Minister of Security Twitter account was hacked, announcing her retirement, and publishing personal data. Their personal phone, not their work phone not the one this Twitter account was registered to. The attacker claimed to have owned more than 30 mail accounts from the ministry, including one reserved to uh, organized crime. To this day, something I haven't written here, uh, even our intelligence service was leaked, and they were using, to this day, hot mail accounts. They haven't used any uh, institutional accounts, but they were official. They were used for official uh, business. Okay. And then the entire national criminal information system was leaked too. Here you have Patricia's number. Patricia Bullrich is our Minister of uh, Security to this day. Then Patricia Bullrich, MinSec is Ministry of Security, Ministerio de Seguridad. Here we have uh, Movistar, it's a phone company, it's just like AT&T, Verizon. This is an official request, what we call official, an official request of information. For example, uh, federal police wants to listen to this, uh, this line's conversations. So whatever uh, request for official information that was made, it was copied and dumped and leaked. So try to imagine what is happening behind the scenes? Let's suppose you uh, report a drug trafficker. This guy is a drug dealer. Okay, now that drug dealer knows someone ratted him out. And now it was you who ratted him out. And even knows who the cops working on his case are. This is really dangerous, because it's a real threat to, uh, to the original guy who reported it, and to the original uh, cops that are, that are were uh, investigating him or her. Here's the hacker saying, I have complete access to the National Criminal Information System. As you might see, it was an SQL server with every port open to the world. So he wasn't lying. At this point, as I was saying before, Personal data of three sites were revealed from the National Criminal Information System, the data of all criminals and organizations, even those who have an intelligence task ordered upon. What means having that? That you're not uh, persecuted legally, you're just being investigated. But you, it's supposed that you don't have to know you're being investigated. Well, now you know. Then, from the mail accounts, particularly from the one of organized crime, the data of all, once again, the data of all the agents that participated in tasks of recon and intelligence. That poses a real danger, as we'll see later. In Argentina, public information is really misused, really misused. Some people think that, uh, for example, you Americans have the uh, social security number. We have a tax ID, a DNI, a national ID number, or tax ID is composed of public data. Uh, for example, as we'll see later, uh, what you earn, your tax category, is also public. So everyone knows where you live, how much you earn, and probably which hour you are away from home. Then, uh, another, another thing, the Organized Crime Division using an email without any key, any cryptographic key. So, a simple plain text email. 
From the main account of compliance, the data of all civilians reporting a regular situation shows as police connivance or abuse. You are denouncing your own police, and they have been leaked. So if you have denounced any cop, say, he's in connivance with a smuggler, he's in connivance with a human trafficker, now he knows you rather him out. Is it understood to this point? Uh, I know my pronunciation is not the best, but sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Two people were found guilty of the attack and later prosecuted. Later, it was found they commanded a spear phishing campaign where they compromised third accounts, including the ministers. Data from people with criminal records and police officers, feds mostly, obtained from the leaks uh, is currently being used on certain data stashes. In Argentina, it's really popular to have uh, what I call parasite sites. Every time, every time uh, for example, all federal revenue agency has a leak, these parasites are abusing it and keeping and storing it. For example, uh, during some years, our federal administration uh, got a bad control of the RAPI. So anyone could query it infinitely on a loop. These stashes armed themselves with a database, crawled one by one constantly. And there, for example, now you have to pay in bitcoins to search for anyone. Just a little Satoshi and you can search for anyone. Have their address, have their tax ID, how much they earn, and so on. We'll talk about this during the last week. And a long lost. Upon dissolving uh, Buenos Aires Metropolitan Police, our mayor, head government Horacio Rodriguez Larreta, announced the creation of the Buenos Aires City Police. If someone knows the difference between Buenos Aires City and Buenos Aires Metropolitan, I would gladly hear it. Okay, in his own words, this new force is the most modern police in the world. You know, we are Argentines. We have the better things. The best things are ours, always. I know, you can love, no, no problem. As the original members from the Metropolitan Police, remember, a Metropolitan Police is just for the Buenos Aires City Police. A big city, but you know, you can compare a, a city police to a federal police in any way. Okay, so uh, he signed a political agreement to convert federal agents to local agents mostly because he could not cover what he had promised, the most modern police in the world. What happened here is the first thing, uh, the first important thing, more than the other antecedents, that lead to what we have today. Cops became unhappy. You know, one day you're a federal agent. You take care on, this is without meaning any disrespect to local agents, obviously. But you train it for years to be a federal agent. You are trained, and you can take action on drug trafficking, economic crimes, money laundering, human trafficking, cyber crime. Every time the local police meets on a cyber crime case, has to call the feds. And then you are trained on criminal intelligence. You are trained for years on whatever specialty you want to take, but now you cannot uh, exercise it. You cannot use that specialty. You are like uh, degraded to a local agent. Then, uh, a new series of technological control, uh, technological control measures were implemented. These new officers who had their own freedom of working, they worked on their own way, face from one day to another a new series of measures they are not used to. For example, carrying an Android device with them at all times, with a GPS enabled and a battery, uh, how you call it, uh, a portable battery, uh, that tracks their activity and their world turns. They can live a minute earlier. That seem, seems good in theory, but what happens when it starts to fail? Let's see. Soon, when all these new technological measures stopped working as intended and generated a further conflict instead of resolving situations, the personnel started ranting, first between them, hey, this phone, it's not working. 
It says I'm located one block away, so I cannot start my turn. You know, you, when you need a cop, you need him here doing his job. Why does he have to deal with a phone that doesn't work? With a GPS that marks him two blocks away? With a timer that says, hey, uh, you owe me one minute, stay one minute longer? What happens when you have a, an emergency and say, hey, you left your area? Of course I left my area. Then remember, sorry, first between them and then on the net, this created what we'll later see as the blue whistleblowers. People started ranting online and sharing information that shouldn't be shared. Remember, this Asian World War wants PFA operatives and their data was leaked before, and they continued leaking, but voluntarily. Let's start checking the perimeter of the most modern police in the world. We'll use a passive recon and we won't try to exploit anything, once again. So, all of the Buenos Aires City police sites share the same SSL certificate, causing errors like domain name mismatch and marking them as insecure. Every one of them is vulnerable to Poodle, Slot, and Drown from 2014. Okay, this can be checked with third-party tools like Komodo SSL Analyzer, and also our objective was to prove that it was easy as writing four lines of code. So we made a repo on GitHub, a site that you can check this with any other tool you like, our objective was that, to show that with four lines, you can prove our point. Just four or three lines, nothing more. Okay, checking the common name is match, that works on every certificate on every site. And for checking Poodle, Slot and Round, vulnerable sites. As you may see, it fails. Sorry, the message is in Spanish, but I think we all get the, the error. Then it was they are using one certificate for six sites, six main sites, and it works only for one. Uh, obviously, I think we, most of us know about Servbot or all the SSL certificate service for free. Well, they seem they don't know it. As you may see with Komodo, this is SSL certificate name is match. In Spanish, it says that the, cert the certificate was issued for Seguridad Ciudad Gobar, a domain that doesn't point to anywhere. But they have implemented that way. Then again, private security, uh, public safety, internal network is vulnerable to Poodle, Poodle, Drama, and Poodle. One of the sites, a Drupal, sorry, will randomly serve the default Drupal installation script upon accessing it. So any visitor can interact with the instance by installing a new one atop the original. You are browsing a plug Drupal. Welcome to installation, and you say, what? The rest of the sites tend to have their listing activated by default, showing not only the server to have a script file, but also custom test the original developers wrote and committed to production. Also, upload directories are publicly available. Uh, let's stop for a second on this. If the original developers do not clean up what they are committing, it reminds me of what happened to PFA with the default, remember the default example for uploading files. It's basically the same situation. You know, uh, noticias policiales means uh, policy related news. Go out, as you may see, it's an official site. Okay, the deal listing, this is the private security site. As you might know, there are tiny MC, it's a little IDE for, how, sorry, reader in JavaScript. Here, an instance of tiny MC is hosted there, and it can be activated abusing an XSS, for example, if one could be found. The policy recruitment site is highlighted from the original metropolitan site. You can check this. Look, 2016. During eight years, seven as Buenos Aires Metropolitan Police and one as Buenos Aires City Police, that site suffered from an XXS vulnerability. So we can activate 10 EMC. For obvious reason, we won't do it. 
we deployed two pods for testing the vulnerability, two proof of concepts. Dallas and Dillinger, again, available at the GitHub. When abusing the input for triggering the XSS, the site logs and prints an error stating a failed SQL query. You know, an SQL injection is possible. For example, what's the malicious script you want to load? Malicious.com, that site doesn't exist. Big framework. It writes your URL, and as you might see the source, it's located. You already load a big framework instance for anyone to visit. This time, what we do is uh, executing inline JavaScript. We change every link to malicious.com slash uh, trojan.x. On the side of the city police, click here, malicious.com trojan.x. Also, we can note that none of the sites implemented CAPTCHA systems to avoid automatic requests, not even their firewall or gateway. Also, the private security site contained many client-side JavaScript login mechanisms. As we all know, you can disable any or tamper any mechanism written in JavaScript. No CAPTCHA, no CAPTCHA. This was one of the side leakets, this one too. No CAPTCHA, and also uses the client-side JavaScript. This site wasn't leaked. This is the gateway, Sophos. Again, file it SSL and no CAPTCHA. This version of Sophos provides no CAPTCHA by default. So on the other hand, Sophos was questioned too a few months ago because its API uses MD4 hashes without salt, without paper, simple and plain MD4 hashes. You know, hashkiller.co.uk or any online service for free can break them in a matter of seconds. It was broken in 2007 and should not protect anything. The Blue Freaker, this is a character that appeared during the Blue Whistleblowers. Uh, every police and every officer had a, a, an, an assigned phone, a custom Android phone assigned. One of these guys, that isn't a hacker or a freaker by itself, started playing with the phone and located a lot of bugs and even rooted his phone and all his partner phones. And they are now out of the police systems. So, uh, as a lot of cops went online ranting that their phones tracked them at its location, what we were talking before, just not allowing them to enter their servers, other simple went uh, offline during work hours. What looked like they were absent from the servers or abandoned the service. Tired of having to explain their situation caused by system failure, they went online exposing this. This new freaker published online a series of videos of him breaking the Android's locations, obtaining, building information from the whole Buenos Aires Police City account, millions more expensive than what was publicly said, privileged escalation to install apps, whatever apps you like. And so with it, he installed King Root and definitely controlled his phone. We did his scan and his APN network, finding a lot of weak assets and even some of the printers that were vulnerable to flaming. You remember that botnet that printed robots? All, are, all around the world. Well, the default port opened uh, 9001 without any password. This step is beyond our talk. As you might see, these are like uh, homemade photos. He was just walking around his service, taking photos of what he was breaking. Installing social networks, then looking for rootkin. Sorry for the quality, it's as he submitted. He submitted it this way. And then, this GIF. This is him making a query that any phone can make, that can make, sorry. He's asking with that number about his uh, billing information, how much uh, how much money do we owe to the company? This might take a second. As you might see, nine millions. Well, it's not really. Then another incident happened. 
Some time ago, before the leaks, a subway camera with an attached monitor failed and crashed to desktop. The monitor then showed a loading screen with an unmasked password and a public IP address. Probably the camera server. It was visible during almost three hours before one of the city police technician repaired it on site. The password was leaking in, text, in plain text. This is a really crowded area where anybody who happens to be can see the, the password. The blue with the blowers. Out of the blue, several pasted containing personal data like users, emails, and passwords from various police sites were published on Pastebin. It was later found that those credentials belonged to critical assets. The recruitment size, the one I said that had no captcha and was hacked, contained medical and psychological records. You know that three do you draw to prove you are not crazy? Religious, family, and personal information for every officer, chief, cadet, and patrolman. And the police report database contained information from both criminals, informants, and complainants with uh, PII. Most passwords were one, two, three, four, five, six, or numeric only. A lot of passwords were personal names. We might see this later. As you might see, personal names like Felipe, Emilio, and so on. MD5. Okay. On 2011, an anonymous blog exposes a complaint about money laundering in the Metropolitan Police, exposing telephones and institutional mails of officers, chiefs, and divisions. Once again, these accounts are used for official purposes but are not institutional. So they belong to public domains like Gmail, Yahoo, or Hotmail. It was never taken down, and it's been some years since it is, it is active. So we'll try to make some awesome queries over that and find where the leak could have happened, uh, who could have been the, zero, the patient zero. As you might see, laundering in the Metropolitan Police, blogspot. Let's start crafting intelligence from this smashed database, all dumps, and online rants. One day it happened. The Buenos Aires City Police was hacked uh, and, lose, and lost uh, three gigabytes of databases with important information. It was a national scandal, as you might see. They were offline, and they were offline for like seven days without having any notice until the fourth day, having, well, the, having that message. So we have a lot of loose ends to follow in order to reconstruct how the last leak was carried on. The original leaks, the ministry leaks, the multiple vulnerabilities they have already, the Buenos Aires City Police leaks, the previous one, the intelligence, intelligence gathered crossing information from all the above. Or worse, we'll see this if we have time later. Okay, let's try to cross information from the previous section, the blogger one. I think you, everybody knows uh, how it's been pounded. Uh, it's a place where you simply enter your username or a password or an email and tells you if it had been involved in any leak. We search for three of the higher chiefs of the police. Three were leaked before. We search for another chief from the ministry, not the police itself. Leaked two. And also, he's featured in an entire user database leak from microelectronic cash. Then the CIO, he was leaked too. Remember, most of these leaks contain the password hint in plain text. For example, name of my daughter. Then it's easy to crack it. Bien, this, uh, this is the Secretary of Public Safety. Pounded two, three times. Three chiefs, two civilians, one of them the police CIO at the time, and the Secretary of the Public Safety were compromised, as we were saying. By checking on right forums, you can get a free copy of the Richard database simply by earning points, commenting, sharing, and so on. In previous leaks, they used numerical passwords or password containing their children's name. Even the hints pointed this out like my first child or DNI, the national identification number. 
As we said before, this data is manipulated in a way that almost anything is made publicly available, whether you want it or not. For example, if you Google me, you can find my tax ID, uh, my fiscal address, as I am not a company, that's my personal house, how much I earn. So it's really easy to find uh, valuable data. Sites, the parasites I was uh, talking about, dateas, buscar datos, buscar personas, informe multiburo, quit online, and the like, contain that information and even keep an historical record better than the federal tax agency. And they are trying desperately to keep as much information as possible so you can query their API. Okay, with these hints, my daughter and my DNA, let's find those passwords. By searching him by his name, we have the tax ID, and the central part of the tax ID is the DNA. So we have the password. And where he lives, his age, it's, and so on. The tax ID, when you cut the first two numbers and the last one, you have the DNA, their password. Now let's find the CIO's daughter. We'll search him online, then based on the address we have, we'll search how many people lives under the same uh, street number, the same roof. It's easy, if they all share the same surname, the same last name, they must be related. Uh, the only problem we have here is that uh, when you're talking about uh, children, minor of age, uh, you might not have the same information disclosed as with adults, but this method never failed in it. So, as you might see the link, it is redacted, just for security question. It's the one with the R. Role, as you might have, as you might see, we have five people. Camila, Pilar, Lucia are women. They are all candidates. Five people live under the same roof. We try to do uh, the LinkedIn dump. They are SHA-1 passwords on Salted. So uh, the secretary account won't be tested as every leak he was involved with stored and disclosed his password as plain text. So, uh, sorry. We hashed one of the passwords, I won't say which one, with SHA-1 and it coincided with the LinkedIn dump. So we have his passwords. So this might be the way they will leak it. Just one minute and we finish. Wallace. It should be noted that during the leaks, Wallace could have played an important role. Uh, I recommend you the site I know what you don't know at. It's uh, like a bogus tracker, no, not bogus, but a strange tracker that exposed what you were downlo downloading with your IP address. So, uh, I have found that the Buenos Aires City Police is involved in the federal crime of piracy. Strange enough. This is their gateway. Look. Some series. But look at this. Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Warzone, GameTorres.com. Will you trust downloading that? Oh, no. Nah. I know. You have the entire police internet connection to download at really high speed, but really, you shouldn't be downloading this. Once again, LEGO DC Comics superheroes, Justin League Comic Clash, LEGO Scooby-Doo, you may notice is dangerous, whether you are in the police or not. So, our conclusions, thanks and credits. My own conclusions are, we are not safe, even those who have to take care of us, neither are. A false sense of security is a slow and insidious killer, do not trust your data to be kept securely. This is especially for Argentine people. It is not stored safely. Internet does not forget, even if that means those all leaks someone made available some years ago. And no, we don't have the most modern police in the world. Let's stop being Argentines for a moment. We don't have the best things in the world. We are Argentines. Corruption, money laundering. We had moderate two prosecutors. Third world mindset, we lost. Out of question. Okay, special thanks to the Recon Village crew for receiving me. A uh, heartfelt thanks to my working team, the SWAT Team Argentina, and uh, to the Blue Freaker who shared with everybody what really was happening behind the scene. Okay, I'm ready if any one of you has a question. Well, no, it's public data feed, so we believe it's just like private data because that's the one. 
Yes, we have uh, many laws about data accessing, but what happens is that they are not respected at all. For example, uh, I'm going to answer you based on my experience on government. I worked for local, for federal, for security forces, and for example, when you need uh, a federal place to get data from a local place, it's a real hassle. They mostly resolve it with, okay, I share the, a database link with you, or I share the dam, take this disk, have it. Please don't lose it. That's the national standard. Aside from what is written, so we have many laws written, but they are not, uh, they are not taken seriously. Uh, uh, for example, one of the, the, the cases that uh, shaken me the most, uh, people, in the Buenos Aires City Police were sharing uh, reports with USB drives, personal USB drives, whenever the system went offline. Say, so, okay, we have to keep working, USB drive, then you have you send like a messenger, walking there, sending them. I think that might be, yeah, but I have no proof, that might be also an important point in the leaking part, as everyone could have a copy in their pocket. If anyone has any other questions, yes. Uh, do you think there might be any foreign agents involved? It's possible. Uh, Argentina is really well known for having many uh, behind the scenes. How do I tell it? Uh, they have some shady interests between nation since. Uh, Yes, you know, we, um, during the last years, uh, during a federal investigation of terrorism, one of our prosecutors was murdered, and it's unsolved to this day. Uh, you might see how the law is moving in my country, how they work. So it's, yes, it's possible. Mostly because uh, it was announced as a, as a political asset, as a campaign, a political campaign promise. We will have a new world police with no corruption, the most technological in the world, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it could be. Yes? What's the mission now? Well, uh, they patched a lot of these things, but that doesn't uh, stop the leak from being available on torrents, on raid databases. Uh, uh, on, or on other world sites. They patched, for example, the XSS, uh, the access to the gateway, at least. I don't know the rest. <laughs> but the last time we tried it, they did that. We always try to update this because they were patching some things, but it, they are a little bit slow. <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, I don't have a, <laughs> a really uh, ready to be public answer. <laughs> okay, any other questions? I hope you like it and I ask you once again, pardon for my pronunciation, it's not the best. I'm, well, well, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>